Hi class, welcome back to online science class. Today we'll be learning about bodies of land and water. Oh, and we have a friend joining us, David the Eagle. Say hi. Last time we talked about how different animals live in different parts of the world. Let's explore those different areas. David, take us away. Where are we, David? We are at Yosemite National Park. After driving for a couple of hours and walking for a good amount of time, you'll see this view. Wow, beautiful, isn't it? What do you see? Pause the video and name some of the things you see. Welcome back. I see big and high land, many trees, and if you look very closely, there's a waterfall. Thanks, David. Where to next? Let's go. Whoa, where is this place? This is Palawan, Philippines. It's a very popular tourist attraction during the summer. It's so beautiful. I wish I could visit this place. What do you see? Pause and name some of the things you observe. Welcome back. Well, I see a large rock-shaped land filled with many trees surrounded by water. What's our next stop, David? Wait, is this the Amazon? Yes, it is. We visited this place last time in the bio... Diversity video. Well, what do you see? Pause the video to find out. Welcome back. Well, I see a long body of water and many trees surrounding the water. That's right. These are some of the bodies of land and water that exist on Earth. Let's take a look at some of them. Landforms are different shapes of land on Earth. Each landform we explored has a different shape. The Apollo 1 has a rounder peak, while the landforms in Yosemite had a sharper and higher shape. Some of the landforms are mountains, valleys, islands, peninsulas, and plateaus. There are more landforms, but we're going to explore these ones for now. Mountains are the ones you saw in Yosemite. They are the highest form of land. Islands are the ones you saw in Palawan. They are lands surrounded with water on all sides. These are usually alone in the ocean with only animals, but there are some that people have inhabited, such as islands in Hawaii. Did you know that Manhattan in New York is an island? It is surrounded by the Hudson and East River. Peninsulas are similar to islands, but different because they are surrounded by water on only three sides instead of all sides. Valleys are interesting because they're not as high as mountains or islands, but are the low areas between hills or mountains, typically with a river running through it. This right here is the beautiful Kagan Valley in Pakistan. Plateaus are an area of highland, usually having a relatively flat terrain that's raised high above the surrounding land. It is different from a mountain because plateaus are flat on the top. You may see a lot of plateaus if you ever visit the Grand Canyon. Now, let's explore the bodies of water. Rivers, lakes, oceans, seas, and canals are all bodies of water. The one we saw at the Amazon is a river, and it is the second largest river in the world. Isn't that cool? Rivers are a st single stream that flows into a larger body of water, like an ocean, and they always contain fresh water. Lakes are different from rivers because they are large bodies of water that are surrounded by land and are not part of the ocean. They contain fresh or salt water. And to distinguish rivers and lakes, um, you could look at like a flowing stream of water, and if it's moving, there are rivers, but if it's not moving, it's a lake. So the next time you go to a national park, try to identify if the body of water is a river or a lake. Oceans are the largest body of water, as they contain only salt water. There are five oceans in the world, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian, the Arctic, and the Southern Ocean. Seas are similar to oceans, but are smaller and are usually partially enclosed by land. People usually say that there are seven seas in the world, but in reality, there are like, much more seas. Canals are special because they are man-made. Canals do not naturally exist but we make them for large ships and boats to pass through. 
They are also used for irrigation, which is a process of giving a controlled amount of water to crops. Farmers use this technique a lot. Now that we learned about types of lands and waters, let's try to point out uh, some of them on a map. This is called a physical map, which shows different landforms and bodies of water. The map has different shapes, colors, and contours, which are outlines of objects for separating land and water. You can see it's very textured and it like shows pointy little um, lands. If you look closely, there are thin blue lines that go across lands. Can you guess what those are? They are rivers. The large blue parts represent oceans and the smaller ones are the seas. So that's lame. now let's name the bodies of water. The part west of North America is the Pacific Ocean and the east is the Atlantic Ocean. North of every continent is the Arctic Ocean and way down south is the Southern Ocean. South of India is the Indian Ocean. Can you spot some of the famous rivers? Pause the video and try to name some of them. One of them we mentioned a few minutes ago. Welcome back. The Amazon River we mentioned before is located in Brazil and it's here. And the longest river, the Nile, in Egypt is over here. Our famous river, the Mississippi, is of course over here. We cannot forget about the seas. The Caribbean, the Mediterranean, the Black Sea, and the South China Sea. Now the mountains. What color do you think the mountains are represented by? You are correct if you said brown and green. We have the famous Rocky Mountains in North America and the long Andes Mountains in South America. We have the Alps in Europe and the Himalayas in the Nepal region of Asia. The Ura Mountains are green because there are a lot of trees there compared to the other mountains. There are hidden landforms such as peninsulas and islands. Do you see them? Pause the video and try to find and name them. Welcome back! Remember, peninsulas are surrounded by water on three sides. Well, let's see, Florida, South Korea, and India are all peninsulas. There are many small islands north of Canada, but a giant one is Greenland. You might be wondering, well, isn't Australia an island? It has water on all of its sides. Well, since Australia is already considered a continent, it is not an island, even though it fits the definition. Wow, this video was a ride, huh? We learned so much information. Today, we learned about different bodies of water and land, and we learned how to point them out on a map. I hope you enjoyed this video, and remember to complete the worksheet in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Bye.